am so tired because today was one of those kinds of days like when you were a kid and you played outside all day and at the end of the day you were absolutely exhausted and that's how I feel because I got to play outside all day and now I am rather exhausted. But I want to show you lots of things that I would include in the category of thrifted finds but also just being a thrifty gardener. So let's kind of do a, a walkabout. This might be a little bit longer than normal because I want to convey a couple of things to you that I've been meaning to tell you for a while. So number one, I want to give a shout out to some people. I don't have time to read all of your messages, but I read most of them. And if you are a YouTube member, I definitely read yours. I want to give a shout out to Karen Louise. I, she sent the sweetest message in her pain she recently lost her husband she sent me she did the kindness of sending me such a lovely note and i can't tell you how much that meant to me that was so kind i also want to give a shout out to sue who told me that she was going to do lots of geraniums too this year and they were going to be white and i just want to see what it looks like sue so send us some pics okay and we'll put them in the community tab and then thirdly this was stuart's idea somebody else commented that they kind of miss my garden the way it was in the past even though they were enjoying it now and when i say in the past i mean prior to the really very harsh winter we had so Stuart had the great idea that in the community tab, if you're a YouTube, uh, Linda Vodder YouTube member, that in the community tab, we will put approximately, Stuart, uh, not every day, but as, soon, as often as we can, approximately a year ago, what it looked like at this same point in time. So if you're new to my channel or whatever, you can kind of look back and see. You may notice some things, you may notice nothing at all. Nevertheless, there will be some things that those who followed me for a long time can revisit and see how substantively some of particularly the evergreens have changed, the trees have changed, and also maybe how the light has changed because of that. So, okay, now let's get to it. So number one, let's talk about some of these things. So much of my garden is thrifted that I, I sometimes forget to tell you that it's thrifted. So I have enough, um, I have enough material for a number of these videos about things that are thrifted in my garden. Thrifted and today thrifty also. So I've talked about the category of metal in general and metal stands in particular. And that, that isn't just restricted to small metal stands, which I've so, shown before. This is a large metal stand. I don't know what it was used for. Um, I don't know. There probably was something that sat in here, but it is a wonderful plant stand. And I like it because it's lightweight and portable and I can move it wherever I want. So today, as I'm kind of tricking out my garden with container plantings, I put this basket. This is one that's going to be in my QVC line. And these baskets, you guys, they're weatherproof. I think I need to go back and check. I think there are, there are five sizes within each set which is something I love about them. And I like them because they're really malleable. So for example, this one, thanks Stuart. This one you can tell is moldable enough and flexible enough that I could get it to conform to the inside of this, of this section. So I found these gorgeous pink begonias. As I've, I have said, I'm into begonias and also geraniums this year. And then I just put a couple, I haven't potted them up yet, but they will get into their terracotta pots. I've got just a couple of one gallon baby gem boxwood from Southern Living. And I've got another repeat, just the twin of up here, the identical twin of another begonia. And here's then the little baby basket. And I think these will be really sweet, you guys, when all of this larkspur blooms in purple and these little baskets are nestled in there it will be a fun kind of temporary display for late spring early summer okay now let's progress through the garden the light's going to be a little bit uneven um, but it's evening and it's absolutely beautiful out so this is one of those kind of things you wouldn't think of using in the garden but i've got and this is not a thrift store find, but this is a wonderful thing. This is a collapsible 
garden wagon. Some of you ask, why don't you just use a garden wagon? Well, sometimes I do. And when I'm really doing a heavy day of gardening, I use this one. I'll put a link below. This is um, the their collapsible garden wagon. Now, the reason I don't use it all the time is because my husband sometimes uses it when he goes fishing or when he goes camping to kind of transport all of his things, his accoutrement that he needs for fishing and camping. But this is the thrift store find. This is just one of these inexpensive kind of Mexican blankets that you can get. Um, I have seen them in Santa Fe. I've seen them in different places. This one I actually just got at the thrift store and I like it because what it does is I just kind of use it as a liner for this little wagon and that way it doesn't get all dirty and everything I can then my husband and I can just lift out this rug take it out and then it's ready for him to use it and this is where I keep all of my stuff in here so that's another thrift store find something I might be a little bit hesitant to use indoors as a blanket but outdoors it's absolutely perfect and I think it kind of it's very cheery and I like it. So that's another kind of odd thing, um, an unusual kind of thrift store find that you might want to think about. Now, I try to always be honest with you guys, but today I told you a lie because I told you I would show you what the corner that we did yesterday looked like um, after it was all tricked out but I just didn't have time to finish up the hanging baskets and so I'm going to wait on that and show it to you once it's all finished. So I promise to do that for you. So let's take uh, just a, an intermission here, a little commercial. Look at this Deutzia. Stuart, would you show people? That is just gorgeous, blooming in white and that's spelled D E U T Z I A you guys I got this years and years ago it's not a plant that you really find very frequently so you may have to look for it on the internet I got this so many years ago and I don't really remember but these sweet little bells are just too dear and it blooms at the same time as the viburnum in white and I love that okay so now, Stuart, if you'll just very carefully back up. Um, this to me is the, like the most fun form of play. It's kind of like when you were a kid and you were putting things together with uh, Lincoln Logs or Legos or something like that. Well, to me, this is play. And these are some thrift store finds that kind of came together as a little vignette. And sometimes I, I like to give as a gift a vignette in its totality. So I'll put something together that I just think looks like that person and I, and I will give it to them as a gift. So last weekend, um, I talked about going to a succulent store and a little indoor houseplant store with my daughter-in-law to be and my son and we bought some pots, but these are all from the thrift store. So these are just little cash pose. Now I could very easily drill a hole into the bottom of these and actually plant them. But since these are going to be gifted to someone, I don't want to do that yet. I'll let them determine if they want them to have drainage or not. And here's another one I found at the same time at the same location. So I'm always looking for things that are in a family together. And then all I did was put in plants that also looked like they were a family together. This was in the ground cover section. I can't even remember what this is called. This is common ajuga. This is a purple romaine that's just beautiful. And this is a creeping thyme. Now I found these three, and they're all glazed pottery, and they have a very organic color palette that I think looks good together. So I thought of them as kind of a, um, a little family of planters and of vases. And this is another reason. I've showed you this piece before. It's one of those just invaluable plant stands that can be used for so many reasons. In this case, I've just got 
this inside of it. This also does not have drainage, so the recipient can use it as a vase or as a planter as they see fit. Now, since I don't let anything go to waste, here's a little gift from the squirrels. So they think that they really have my number and they tear apart the coir liners to hanging baskets and things, which is just one more reason that we are mono and mono, but I love it after they kind of shred it and I find these shredded masses around and I love to use it as an organic kind of mulch topping for my containers. I like it ever so much better than Spanish moss and so they think they have thwarted me but oh no, I have figured out a way to use some of that kind of torn apart coir. So I really like the way that looks. So what I would do is just package all of these things up together and give them, give it to them as a gift. Now this little one, by the way, I don't even remember where I got it. I just had it. I remembered that I had it and it went with this aesthetic and this color thematic. They all looked good together. So I am someone who re-gifts and I thought all of these would look great together. And so I will just package them up and give them probably either to my daughter-in-law or to Stuart because he has been wanting to get into houseplants, haven't you, Stuart? Okay, so anyhow, I think this is just a really fun vignette. And then I have a little candle here so I can enjoy this temporarily. If I was keeping these for myself, that for myself, then I would just take out the ajuga, take out the ground cover, and after I after I finished enjoying them, I would plant them in the ground. So these little family units are things that I always look for at the thrift store. Now, if you'll come around the corner with me, this is something that it occurred to me, you guys have probably seen before in previous years, but I never pointed it out as a thrift store find. So this is just an old, um, maybe it's a carpenter's bench. I'm not really sure what it was when I got it. And I've had this for years, you guys. When I got it, it was painted a baby blue and I enjoyed it that way for a while, and then I wanted something that was a little bit more seamless in my garden. So now it has more of a dark, oh, kind of a, I don't know, coppery patina or a dark gray patina. And right now, at this point in time, because it, it is, what I like about it is it's very mobile. Benches like this that you will find, whether they're metal or they're wood, are I think invaluable in the garden because they make lightweight tables that you can use for display or you can use as side tables for when you're sitting outside. So right now, this one is holding my little rosemary collection and some of my small olive trees. This will grow it may stay here it may move I don't know now I want to point out that this rose here which is a climbing old blush this breaks my heart a little bit because right now it is usually in full bloom pink blossoms that completely cascade over this picket fence in the corner and all of that new growth came out and it completely froze out this year and it's starting all over, but I see signs of hope because look, there's a tiny little bud there. And there's a tiny little bud here. So I'm giving it a feed and hopefully it will still perform. I've got some pruning on it that I need to do. And I will do that. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention was last year, I would mostly do garden tours and garden walkabouts after things were pretty much already in place and they looked the way I wanted them to look. In other words, all of the con containers were already planted, things were or already styled the way I wanted them to be styled. But this year, because I so many of you want to know behind the scenes and the how to and kind of how my mind works in putting together a composition, I'm giving, I'm showing you the uglies. I'm showing you a lot more befores rather than just the afters. So you too 
can maybe use some of these tips and hopefully in the comments share your tips that I can learn from of how we put together these beautiful little displays in our various gardens. So now let's come this way, Stuart. And this is, this is one of my most loved uh, I won't even call it a thrifted item. Let's just say it was in um, somebody's trash pile at the end of their driveway and I took it. And this is the remnants. I got this like six years ago. <laughs> and at that time it was whole and beautiful. And I, I loved it. It looked, had that French laundry basket look. And I used it for years outside, and now there's only half of it remaining, but I still love it. And what I'll probably use it for is just to corral something. Maybe in the potager, it might corral some greens or something. But even after they have started to decay, I still find baskets really, really useful. Though I do, I have to say, I do love the baskets in my new QVC line that will not decay and that are weatherproof. Okay, so Stuart, if you will come this way, show the pretty stuff as we walk. I want to point out something I have pointed out before. But we have a lot of new viewers and I, I continue to kind of get comments on it and questions about it. And that is this bird bath. Now, don't judge me on my housekeeping because I have not cleaned out the bird bath yet. We had horrific winds once again yesterday, so I've got a lot of work to do. But a lot of you have asked me about this bird bath. The bird bath itself is beautiful. And this was actually done by a local artist here. This was a gift to a friend of mine. And I really love it. And I wanted to elevate it and not have it, thank you, Stuart, and not have it on the ground. So I had an old metal table that used to have a glass top. And I thought, well, why can't I just turn it upside down and use the base, the legs of it, to support, just like your diamond ring um, or on your engagement ring, to support that saucer. And then the round part is below. So you can see that the top is hidden below beneath this ground cover. And so what I do, and I bet what you do, because so many of you like to reuse, recycle, repurpose, and be thrifty gardeners, is you just look around and you see, okay, what do I already have in my basement, in my garage, in my attic, that I could use that would serve a utilitarian purpose, but would also very much have kind of a vintage look and already be aged and be very functional. You don't have to buy something new. I'm lazy. I don't like to shop if I don't have to. Um, and if I can repurpose something I already have, I like that kind of aha moment. Now years ago when I was in high school and in college I worked at a kind of a high-end gift store and I would do their displays and I was always looking for how I could find something that was a display item that would kind of convey the look and feel and theme that I was trying to communicate and so this does just that. Okay so Stuart let's come this way. Here is another, this is a dollar store item for the thrifty gardener, not necessarily a thrifted item. This is just one of those, uh, okay, this one is hoppy. It's just one of these brushes and squeegees that you get at the dollar store. I use it to clean off my glass top table, all of my windows and everything. It's very inexpensive, but I find it indispensable in the garden and like I say, for just a couple of bucks, you can make your job a whole lot easier. It's definitely one of those, the right tool for the right job kind of things. So if you're at your local dollar store, you might wanna pick one of those up. And then lastly, if you'll come over here, 
Now, I did not get these at the thrift store, but I see them at the thrift store all of the time. These actually were a hand-me-down from a friend of mine down the street. And I said, oh, I can use those out in the garden. And that is just a set of these um, TV trays. She had a set of them. She wasn't going to use them. I used them inside for a while for different kinds of things. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to put these out in the garden and use them as kind of a makeshift surface that I could use for potting and things. And they have held up remarkably well. And you can find these at the thrift store for practically nothing. And, but they age kind of beautifully. I really like the way that they look. They're inexpensive and even when they're painted and the paint starts to wear away, I don't mind that at all. So if you're looking for an inexpensive potting table, potting bench, or even something to use as a display for your topiaries or your prized geraniums or whatever, then you might take a look at these. So there's just a few ideas that you guys might want to look for next time you're in your thrift store or your garage sale or wherever. Make sure that if you've got some really good scores that you found recently that you comment below. If you like this, make sure to give us a thumbs up. And as always, I will see you guys again in the garden next week.